Okay, I wanna show you my absolute favorite thing to make on a laser, and that is a map. It's actually a couple different layers. It's not glued down. But making something like this has been way harder than what it should be. That's a uh, quick overview. But there's a brand new tool that I actually used to make this map and a bunch of different ones. We're gonna jump into it right now. Now the tool is called Laser Map Maker and it's paid. And I know a bunch of you may be wondering how can I do maps like these for free? So let's talk about that for a second uh, and then we'll jump into the tool. So there are a few different ways to do it. The most complicated, but the most control you have over how the map looks is using a open source piece of software called QGIS. And when you open that up, you're basically importing free to use data sources. And I've done a full video and tutorial in the past going through that process. And that's still valid. The software might look a little bit different, but that's the completely free option if you want to go that way. Now there is a free piece of software I've also used in the past called Snazzy Maps. What's nice about it is there's a bunch of different map styles that you can use. And I've seen people make like maps from here as well, but it gets a little like convoluted how you export those and get them into a laser. So all the files are good to go. And that's where Laser Map Maker comes in. And I actually got an email from the developer asking me if I wanted to check this out. And I usually get a lot of emails for a bunch of like random software and a lot of random lasers. And even though I've said a lot, a lot of those are trash. But when I jumped into this one, I was very pleasantly surprised. And even though I can do everything inside of QGIS and some other software, it's still a pretty big pain, especially going from having an image and then doing all the special stuff to actually make it so you can use a laser. So let's actually walk through how I made this. Okay, let's jump in. We're gonna do a new project, kind of going left to right. On the left side is going to be your layer panel. So real similar to other like photo editing, uh, vector editing software where the layers will build up. But specifically with this, when I go in to add a layer, you're gonna be selecting the data source that you want to live on that layer. And with that data source, you're gonna be able to tell it like how you want it to visually look. So there's kind of two different things you do with it and it can be a little bit confusing, but using this one as an example, um, it's pretty easy. It's basically two different boards that were cut out. These are the bigger roads that were cut out. And then the other ones I engraved underneath. And there's a bunch of other things you can do as well that we'll talk about here in a minute, like buildings on water and that kind of stuff. So um, the first one we wanna do is the roads. And so first I'm gonna call this road and then cut. So I know this is a cut layer. And then I'm gonna select all of the roadways, but you can see there's also tunnels and walkways and railways and all kinds of stuff in there. I'm gonna create this layer. And you can see I am on, I believe, yeah, New York. Uh, right now is what it looks like it's defaulted to. So I just change the location. You just hit this uh, search right here. And I'm just gonna type in Athens, Georgia. And that's a really handy part about this because basically you can set up your own style, how you want everything to look. And then to change stuff up, all you have to do is just change the location. And then all of those things come over. So you really don't have to like start from scratch once you kind of go through here and set it up the first time. So you can see I've got my map right here. Now in order to split out just the roads that I want to cut out, I basically need to take off um, all of the minor roads or the roads that aren't like the big highways and stuff going through town. So there's a bunch of these that I'm gonna want to hide. And what I have found is you can kind of like right click right here and hit hide. And you're gonna see some of these starting to go away. Uh, currently, none of these are. Uh, let's see, I think it's gonna be, there we go. Some of the roads went away from there. So the primary streets, the tertiary, tertiary, I can't say it. I do want those. Uh, the primary roadways, those are gonna be the big ones. Yep, that one stays on. The roadway trunk, I do want those. Uh, and I don't want the on and the off ramps. And that's basically what I've got right here. And I'm actually gonna go in here and delete these real quick because I want to use them later. All right, so then with those selected, I wanna change the way they look because you can see they're different weights uh, depending on how it's zoomed in, but also like this one is thicker than the interior, which you might want. But in my case, I want everything to be the same thickness for when I cut it out. So I am going to right click. This guy right here is going to select everything within that layer. And when you do that, you can see that you have the ability to adjust the style. So I'm gonna hit the style button right here. And this is all of the settings for what it is going to look like. So I can change the color and then I'm gonna hit override because I wanna override the default. So you can see everything turned to red, um, but I'm gonna keep it, yeah, we'll do it on red so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Then the line opacity, now the line width, this is the one that I wanna change. Uh, and I'm adjusting it now and nothing's changing. Uh, so usually you have to hit the override button to be able to override 
stuff. Uh, but, but yeah, so I'm gonna go in and adjust this down. I think like right there is probably pretty good for cutout. And then you can adjust how the caps of the lines are. So you may wanna make everything rounded. You can just override that to make sure that's happening and then override. And then you can see we've got everything good to go. So that is great for the style, but this is where it gets really handy in terms of how you want to cut this out. So if I actually click these guys right here, so this is for this entire layer, I can go and configure the layer properties. And so you can see the tracing strategy. So this is the big one because I'm gonna be cutting this one out. So I don't wanna do a fill, so we'll have it like dark in between. I just want the two lines on the outside of the street. So in that case, I'm gonna do an outline um, and then you can go in and adjust some other stuff from there. Um, this is one thing that confused me from the jump. Here's another color. But what this is talking about is the border around the actual map itself. So this guy right here. And this is another feature about this that makes it a lot easier to do it with lasers. Because normally if you're gonna be doing like a road layer or something that's gonna be cut out and then put on top of something else, um, you're gonna have a frame around it. And it's really handy when like all of the roads connect together so it can all stay in one piece. But you can adjust the frame and so you can see that is what that black thing here is on the edge. So I'm gonna adjust this to red as well, just so that's all one color. You can see what's going on. Um, and then you can adjust that border width. So 40, like I think you can go like super high, 80. Yeah, so you can do a really, really thick border if you wanted to. Uh, I'm gonna stick it with 30 for now. Um, and so there you go. So that is that entire layer. Let me close this because this computer is a little bit smaller. And so, even with that border, I can still adjust like the positioning and everything where I want it to go. So like the zoom and the rotation, you can just like adjust it as needed. Okay, so we've got that, but now we need to add in the smaller roads that, that are gonna go underneath this guy. We're gonna go up here and create another layer. Uh, I don't wanna use the land, I am just gonna use the roads again. Uh, and this is going to be all of the roadways. So I've got all of these selected and that's what we saw earlier just a second ago. Create that layer. And now you can see all of those little guys popping up. And some of these will be zoom dependent. So like as you get closer, uh, more and more of these like side streets will pop up. Uh, but here is another feature that I really like about this that is not super easy in other software is let's say there's a certain type of street uh, I wanna change color or change the size for whatever reason. I can go to the inspect mode and as I'm hovering over it, you can see it highlights it. And so you get an idea of everything that is on the, in this case, it's like going purple or now it's green. This is the road secondary streets. And so you can see what all of those are. And if I was wondering like what these little guys are, um, these are pathways. Um, these are tertiary streets, so I guess going three all the way down. So that feature is super handy, especially if there's like goofy stuff in here you don't want. So let's say I, I don't want all of these little side streets. Um, I can click it, it's gonna automatically select it, and then I can just hit hide, and then all of that stuff is gonna go away. Now I'm gonna go in and change the color of all of the roads just to make it easier on the layers. So again, making sure everything is selected, come up here to style, and I'm gonna make everything, let's say, well actually let's use one of these. Blue, override, and now everything is blue. And I could do a border with this, but in this case, I actually don't need a border because this is going to be the bottom layer. So I'll just be able to cut this out directly. I am finding though, uh, if I at least do a border uh, width of one, I do get like an outline of the square to cut out, um, which is really handy when you're doing like multiple layers and stacking them up. And then depending on the type of sign or like the city that you're working on, um, you can also adjust the aspect ratio. So like two to one, one to one, blah, blah, blah. You guys get it. Uh, really, really handy. Um, it makes it pretty seamless. Now this is the point you can get to with other software where you have a design. Usually you're gonna have it by different colors. So then you can pull those colors out when you move to your laser software. But this is what I like about this and makes it way, way easier. I can go to preview export. And when you do that, it's going to give you a preview of what every layer is going to look like. And so these are gonna be separate exports that then you can bring into like Lightburn or whatever and cut them out. So in this case, uh, we are doing an outline. That one's good to go. And in this case, we are doing a fill. Uh, that is good to go. But you can also adjust the format. Uh, but if you're doing stuff with lasers, most of the time you're gonna be using SVGs. So I'm going to export this map. All right, and then once that is complete, you have separate files that you can download. So I'm gonna bring in my engrave layer first. I'm gonna download that one. 
Okay, so I've just pulled the cut layer into Lightburn. Um, I am going to make it smaller because it is way too big right now. But you can see we've got everything in there and they're brought in exactly like we need it. So it's gonna cut that shape out. Um, and it's pretty much what this is right here. And you've got that border and then everything connected already for you. Normally that's something you have to add later. Now let's go ahead and bring in another layer. And what's nice is usually if you have different colors in the file, um, they're gonna come in as different layers as well. So then you can go in here and adjust all of your settings inside of Lightburn. Uh, for this, this is the one that's going to be a fill. And for this one, this will be a line. And then you can do like all of your normal laser Lightburn stuff as well. Now, uh, even if you aren't using Lightburn, maybe you are using um, Xtool Creative Space. Um, this is a different one I'm actually working on currently. So the same deal, I was just able to bring in an SVG just like any other SVG and then run it through the machine as well. It makes it super, super easy to use. So you can do a bunch of other features as well. And this is an example of a three layer map uh, to where I actually have water on the background. So this is cut out and we've got buildings as well as roads inside of it. Uh, and then I was able to take the land shape and just engrave it on the underneath just so I knew where everything would like line up on top of it. And then I also have the roads right on top. There is a link down below to check out Laser Map Maker. That is an affiliate link. So if you go through that, I get a kickback, uh, but feel free just to Google it and go that way too. If you don't want to give me a kickback, that's totally fine. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.